Hello and welcome. I'm having the pleasure to do an artist conversation within the context of the exhibition Musea about networking as a female artist. As we are right now facing the um, impact of Corona in Germany and globally, we had to adjust the physical exhibition and are launching an online program in order for you all to participate in the exhibition. Musea is an international exhibition exchange between five artists based in Latvia and five artists based in Germany, in Munich. And um, the artists have worked together uh, around specific topics. So the big um, question has been how a healthy network looks like in today's art world and what artistic success looks like within this network. It um, has been thought around the questions of how we think and rethink networking as an artist, in particular as a female artist, uh, especially in a society that puts competition over solidarity. What does artistic success require and what does artistic success even look like? And what does a healthy artistic ecosystem need? We used the thought model of Musea, so a biological ecosystem that um, takes the, the figure of the fungus uh, mycelium as one of the specific discourse forms where little uh, thread-like cells run um, uh, in, the, in the soil and build a healthy ecosystem. So these were a few of the thoughts we were exploring in the exhibition. And today I'm having the big pleasure to talk to Penelope Richardson, uh, one of the artists who's based in Munich. Thank you very much, uh, Penelope, for being here. And I'm going to uh, share my screen in a minute. And we're going to talk about the work you've done for the exhibition and how your work relates to the topics of ecosystem success and network. Good to have you here. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. All right, I'm going to change and sharing my screen. So this is one of the works um, of the paintings that you work on. Do you want to guide us through what the thoughts behind your work have been and how they relate back to the exhibition? Yes, um, it was it took us a little bit of time to sort of um, develop our concept as a, as a sort of artist team. Me and my um, collaborator, um, Sandra Strehler. And there we came to the idea of um, wanting to use uh, plants and exotic plants um, based in office buildings um, in, in Germany and in, and in Latvia. And so this work I've developed, I've called it, um, it's a series called German Tropical. And what would this room be without plants? So um, in this work, I'm exploring a little bit the idea of residue and um, the residue of leftover systems that are still with us in everyday life or still exist. Um, looking at sort of i was a bit interested in interconnectedness and um this invisible interconnectedness uh, between things um and the things that remain from past your sort of legacy um and in in these works that we, i'm sort of feel like i'm shining a bit of a light on a ecosystem of power and how it was used in architecture and um, so the architecture is the is the system of power and then the the plants are the sort of silent witnesses the residue the things that are there that aren't taken much notice of in the space uh, but they exist and i was interested in the idea of exotic plants um, and how in germany it's a cold place and exotic plants and um, 
so the all, each of these paintings has um, a different exotic plant from some sort of tropical country, Mexico, um, Peru, whatever. Um, Mont and and then I've at the end because some I'm a foreigner in Germany. I also see myself maybe as a bit of an exotic plant. And I've uh, the last two paintings have superimposed um, Australian exotic plants. So they're not exotic to me, but they're exotic to um, the context of Germany. I've superimposed them to bring that into the context of the present, um, that these buildings where I've superimposed the structure, um, each, each painting has a real room that belonged to an architecture of the um, National Socialists. And these rooms, most of these rooms still exist. Um, and but they've been repurposed now um, and the buildings where i've put or the rooms where i put the exotic plants my exotic plants my australian ones um they are two buildings in munich which are now used for our, as the institute of art history and also the conservatorium of music which were very central buildings in the regime and then they've been repurposed in a way for the creative yeah and it's sort of this bit this irony um and the plants in there are still they're still plants and they're still the similar sort of plants so they're sort of like a, a residue the whole building is a residue but the plants themselves are this thing that stays and it's a, it's alive and you actually don't know how long these plants have been there you know the real plants so i just wanted to make a reference to this idea of the plants being some sort of silent witness through this whole series of work. And it's also really interesting in the context of um, success and in the context of networking. For everyone who's not aware, Munich has been one of the dominant cities during the German history and it has sort of a tradition that a lot of the former national uh, socialist um, buildings have become uh, detoxified through art basically and um, it, it's it's weird I studied in Munich so I'm very familiar with the art historical building and the library sits in there so I wrote part of my thesis in the building and it gets a bit spooky when you're you're there late evening and um, do know about the historical context and I think it's really interesting because you're your work sort of relates into this thing of detoxification, which, is, with, which has been part of the whole exhibition and thinking about what we need for a healthy network. And I think in a time where we all talk about globalization and now we do see what a global event um, looks like, at least in a negative side, it's also interesting always to see that um, global does not mean always healthy. And in particular, if we're talking about success, uh, we do always see the advantages of globalization, but there are a lot of um, certain questions we don't dare to ask, right? And I think detoxification in that regard about um, what does global mean? What does international mean? What does foreign mean? These are all valuable questions when we're talking about artistic success, right? Yeah, and as to comment on that, I it it, it always seems uh, in the, these days that it's very easy for artists to move globally and everywhere and be in all places at once. And but my reality is I've lived in several places as an artist, and it's it's really takes quite a long time to become part of wherever you are and the not the scene so much, but to actually be there and and you think oh, i can just go and make art like i always make like at home but somehow something changes and i personally i'm the sort of artist that can't ignore my context and can't ignore the history and can't ignore and in fact it brings questions up and also the language play often uh, words spark uh, ideas new words and connections that sometimes i have talked to people in german saying what about this word and they're like uh oh. and i've seen a connection in the language which they've never thought about so so 
that's something that um, I think it's it's as an artist it's it, it's there's this sort of fantasy that you can just swing around the world and um, paint and install and do whatever but it actually in the reality it is not that easy and yeah absolutely I, I very much agree and particularly it has been a very performative experience doing curating this exhibition I'm based currently in Switzerland one part is in Munich another part is in Latvia it sounds very international it sounds very chic um, when we're talking about that but it has had a few challenges in order about communication now that all the borders are closed we had to deal with how do we set up the exhibition how do we get the pieces from one uh, country to the other what does it mean right now to have this collaboration and conversation going on we had to switch a lot of the of the exhibition now into online content trying to deal with different um, countries and different languages that has been one of the big topics so it, it has been a very formative way of thinking about all this um, discourses and questions right as we were working through this exhibition right yeah exactly and i think one interesting thing that's really come from this was there was this big discussion about whether we should just show our works in our context you know and just put it online so the works in latvia we show them next to my works you know photograph them whatever um or should we uh just abandon it or whatever but we decided to go ahead and actually hang the exhibition and i think that uh has been very cathartic for the process and without having done that i think we would all feel very unsatisfied and an unfulfilled network let's just say i think the artists in latvia have um well, particularly i've kept sandra involved in every step of the hanging and the ideas and i made a plan and you know so so she, it's as if she's been there even though she hasn't been there so that that's something that i think was really important and both i mean th i think we both feel and the other artists in munich we all feel like now we've actually installed the work in the gallery even though people very few people will see it we feel satisfied with that i do agree it is um i mean it's it, it has been quite a challenge as a curator because I'm stuck in a border. Like I cannot visit physically right now the exhibition I'm curating, which is a yeah. really weird um, feeling. But it has been a question like, what is a successful exhibition, right? Does it does it require to have a physical exhibition? Is it successful if we are changing the whole format? What does a successful format look like in an online time? Because I'm I'm per personally not. Um, a believer that you can um, sort of mimic an exhibition online with the same tools that you can go through a physical exhibition. I think you have to revise the format and I believe very much in that. Mm -hmm. So it, by working through all of these questions, I think we have um, learned a lot. And I mean, that's the next question I wanted to, to talk with you because in this mini collaboration with your partner Sandra, what were the things that you mostly learned, the tools, the skills, the challenges you've overcome? I think for me, um, I, I don't know, I can't speak for Sandra, but for me, um, we had a lot of hiccups just to get to the point of starting. And so there was a lot of sort of discussing the sort of logistics and stuff like that and then we got to the point of actually starting and then it was sort of like such a surprise uh, we didn't know really how to start and um so names were picked out of the hat suddenly we all had a partner okay so what did i do i wrote an email and suggested that we have a a chat i think i wrote an email and told sandra who i was and a little bit my background and everything and then uh basically i said well we could do it like this we could do it by post we could, how would she like to do it and we then decided we would skype each other and email so basically we've skyped and emailed and we had um intense look at each other's websites to see where there was some sort of connection and the thing that came out that we strangely i think the sort of gods i'd say this for all the partners that the gods were sort of saying okay those two must go together when the names were picked out of the hat 
Um, because Sandra's work, she uses a lot of installative things and she uses nature and she paints and she makes objects. So it's a really diverse practice. And um, we both saw that we were both quite diverse and um, then decided, okay, let's just start with the trees or the, you know, and that was the sort of starting point of a discussion. But we, I think just the networking, rather than talking about the theme of the show, I think first we had to understand each other a little bit. And so we, our process began through this Skyping and then through our work. Yeah. To give our viewers a bit of a context. So even though I'm the curator, it was important for me to be more of a facilitator and a partner in this whole exhibition. So we were all learning through doing. And um, part of this belief to have it as non-hierarchical as possible as you can in an exhibition, um, it was important for me to not mer match the artist myself. So that was the moment of chance. So I put all the names in one hat and then I drew basically the artists who were collaborating and working with each other. And in all the conversations I've been having, and that's a really nice surprise, all the partners uh, were successfully ma matched and they feel like they resonated with each other. So it's very nice that you're emphasizing that as well. And when we're talking about success, what are your thoughts around success for you personally? Um, for me personally, success as an artist or for success for this project for me has been um, that I've really got to know the other uh, other artists in Munich a lot better, um, and I think that's uh, something that makes me feel a little bit more like I belong um, here, and that I've got people I can talk to, and that it, it hasn't. It's not the same if you just meet people at an opening or something. This has been a process where we've had to sort of negotiate a lot of things, discuss a lot of things. It may not be long and endless discussions, but this regularity has been something that's been really um, valuable for me. Um, and, you know, seeing how people think and understanding people a bit better, that's been really good. Um, success, I lost my train of thought a little bit, but um, also something that I found very valuable for me, and I don't know if the, anyone else has said this, but this for me is the first time I've actually worked in an exhibition that has a curator who's, a, who's working with us. And that's for me been a really interesting process, um, especially um, it's, I, I didn't know what to expect from that. And, and, but I found that the few questions and um, input that's come has really made me think more deeply about maybe processes that are a little bit intuitive or a little bit it just I'm not thinking about them I'm doing them you know it's this learning by doing it's like art by doing sometimes you working through all these processes quite deeply at different levels in the um subconsciously and it's been important to have a few questions that have brought that subconscious or that unconscious ideas a little bit more to the surface so that's been also valuable I'm very glad to hear that thank you and what kind of, when we're talking about solidarity and success, and we keep to be very transparent here, what kind of solidarity networks do you require for your own artistic success? And what kind of structures do you require in your personal life, in your business life, sort of, do, do you have certain bridges? Oh, that's a bit of a hard question. So I, I've just made a few notes. Um, actually, can I just say an anecdote, something that surprised me, and I don't Absolutely. know, this is um, a couple of weeks ago, just not long before the Corona lockdown, I was at a finissage with a friend of mine who's an art historian, and she'd organised the exhibition. And so the artist was there, he was an Austrian artist. Um, and his work through some big abstracty sort of things, really, yeah. Anyway, I got chatting to him and he said that he'd worked with Arnulf Rainer, or he'd studied under Arnulf Rainer, and I was like, oh, that 
you know, wow, um, that would have been amazing. And then his friend was there as well. And he said he did as well. And yeah, whatever. They, they were like, yeah, they used to not go. And he, Arnold Freyna, would rarely come to teach or whatever. And they, anyway, that they said it was good because it was completely sort of free. Um, and I was thinking, because they were probably about the same age as me, two men. And I was thinking, ah, oh, that's, you know, I wouldn't have ever thought of, like coming from a, Australia, um, in a time when you wouldn't have thought about going and studying in Austria. These days, young people think about that, yeah? But there wasn't even a possibility, because you wouldn't even know how to contact people. Um, so the idea of networking, you had to do it in, I don't know, you just have to get on a plane and go somewhere and just try your luck. Um, but what was funny is then I said, started talking to our art school and my experience, and then they said, oh, you're a colleague. And that was like shocked me because no one has ever really, because yeah, it was that thing of, oh, we're, we're suddenly, we understand each other. Um, and I thought, yeah, that's something that maybe we don't do enough amongst ourselves as female artists. Um, just that sort of camaraderie. It was suddenly like I was on their football team. Um, that was something I think artists need more of, or female artists. We need, we're busy sort of building and doing stuff, but maybe just knowing that we're, we are artists and we're part of that network of artists and we think differently or we have a particular way of thinking, because suddenly we would, the, me and these two guys, we were just talking about a whole lot of other things that they would maybe never talk to other uh, normal people because of that art school experience. Yeah, so yeah that's, that's interesting. Anecdote. I mean, that, that's, um, that's part of a lot of the conversations we've been having in the exhibition, right? Because the, the whole point of starting the exhibition has been that female artists, even 2020, are still underrepresented in the big exhibitions that you get less retrospectives, they are less uh, expensive in the art market, there are less uh, female curators, there are less female directors, and so on and so on. So the whole success notion is very gendered. And yeah, I think in, totally. a, in our society where we have the strange belief that in a meritocracy, um, you just have to put the work in and then success comes on the other side. We sort of uh, do understand that success is shaped through gender, through class and through race. And if we do not understand the systemic conditions that contribute to success, we're losing a big part. Yeah, I totally agree. Because in that moment, I had also that funny feeling of, my God, there doing their projects and I don't know they they seem to be living from their art a little bit more than uh, I am I'm still making art I'm always been making art they are also making art but from the conversation we had I thought mm, okay they've got outlet sources they've got more and I don't know whether I I sometimes wonder is that because I've moved around so much it's you know it just and, uh, and it, it does come down sometimes to that feeling, okay, it, maybe it is partly because I'm, um, I'm a woman, woman artist, and as you go on in time, it seems like you become less relevant. Um, I remember I read, um, a, uh, what was her name? The, uh, the one who, I've just had a mental block, a name block. Anyway, the artist who did the fur cup, um, um, yes, we, we, we're getting there. Hold on. <laughs> it's going to be very embarrassing because this whole thing is going to be recorded and we're like, oh boy. Anyway, okay, anyway. Um, she said that she became more free because she had so much focus when she was young with working in the sort of dada and whatever. And then suddenly there was so less, so little interest in her work and what she was doing that in a sense she became freer. She could do whatever she wanted because there was no audience. Yeah. So, th so that's something that I always think also is like you do your stuff and what are you, do you want, 
do stuff for an audience that doesn't exist or do you do something because it's something that you really want to explore yeah and this struggle of the invisible audience or not no audience <laughs> and doing being free just to do your own thing it's it's um because sometimes you have this audience in your head and they they're not there you know so may as well do your own thing that's yeah absolutely i think um you, you touched on a few very important parts of the success notion and to finish the this wonderful conversation what qualities do you think uh, one requires in order to have a successful collaboration? Um, I think something for a collaboration in a, the, the size of what we've done, I think um, one quality is you have to have a belief in the project and you have to have a positive approach and attitude because things don't always go how you want. Um, I think there's also a sense of having a togetherness, like we're in this together, um, and, but also an openness and flexibility to accommodate each individual's sort of a, approach and not just their artistic approach, but also how they go about um, maybe contributing to the project. Um, and also being able to draw on the resources of each individual person's strengths um i've noticed in this and, and experiences i've noticed in this project some of us are better at writing some are better at um talking to the funding bodies other ones a um, bit, bit better at a hands-on thing of like the installing and stuff like that so all of those abilities have come together to make the successful exhibition and um yeah i think one word that a german word i love and i don't know dirt durchhaltvermögen i think that's what you need for such grit <laughs> yeah grit yeah <laughs> to um to really make sure that it happens or to to follow it and then still have the energy when you actually get the funding get the space get the content and actually to make the work yeah, yeah. Penelope, I want to thank you so much. It's been a joy to talk to you. And for you, dear viewer, we are searching to have a discussion with you. So use the hashtag Musilia Muk, M-U-C for Munich, in order to get in touch through social media, write us. Um, we're always very curious to hear from you. Tell us about what you think about artistic success, solidarity, because one thing is sure, in order to be successful in the art world, well, we need each other. We need solidarity over competition. Thank you so much and talk to you soon. Thank you, Annabelle.